Okay, let's look at 2012, and I think there are actually two of them from 2012 that involve Taylor series. This first one's really a data table problem where they, they give you information kind of in a data table format, and then they ask you some things, but you know, some Euler method, some Riemann sums that don't really have anything to do with Taylor polynomials. The first one is an equation on the tangent line, which we now know as the first order approximation. And then part D is really the Taylor specific one where it wants us to write a second degree Taylor polynomial and use it to approximate F1.4. The whole point of this one is that they're giving you four different methods to all approximate F of 1.4. So tangent line approximation, quadratic approximation, Euler method approximation, and then a Riemann sum approximation. So I really do like this question in terms of how much calculus it has. Feel free to take a screenshot of it. I'm not going to have the ability to keep the data table on the whole time. So if you want to stop the video now and kind of write down some of that information, if you don't have that question, I'm going to scoot it up and then I'm going to go. Okay, so part A says write an equation for a tangent line. Just as a reminder, a tangent line old school was nothing more than point slope or y equals mx plus b, right? It's just a line, right? We now know, if you've, if you've taken some Taylor series stuff, that we know that the tangent line is the first order approximation. So we might write it like this, f of a plus f prime of a x minus a. And I just want to remind you that these are saying the exact same thing, literally m f prime y1 f of a x minus a these two are identical this is just taylor series notation so if you tell me that you want to write the equation on the tangent line and you tell me that you know that the function's value is 15 at 1 and you know the derivative is 8 then i can easily write the equation on the tangent line there you go i also can estimate f of 1.4 using the tangent line because that's just plugging in 1.4 into here and getting 18.2. Okay, that's part A. Part A wanted you to write an equation on the tangent line and use it to approximate f of 1.4. Part B. Part B says use a midpoint Riemann sum with two subintervals of equal length and values from the table to approximate this. So just as a reminder, what is this integral? What do you get when you integrate the derivative from a from 1 to 1.4? Well, you get the change in the function, right? This is integrating f prime. f prime is the rate at which you change, and so integrating that derivative gives you that accumulation, which is equal to then the change in f over that time span. Okay, we can't actually do the integral, um, but we can find the midpoint. So if you come up here and look at this, it wants to do... Uh, two intervals, so we're going to integrate, or we're going to do a Riemann sum from here to there, and then from there to there. Hopefully you can see that the width here is, we're going to jump up 0.2 and then jump up another 0.2, and a midpoint Riemann sum is that we use the middle y value. So we're going to use this y value and this y value, right? We're going to use 10 for that first interval, and we're going to use 13 for the height of that second interval. And again, you may have to review LRAM and RRAM, but this integral is going to be approximately, they're both 0.2 wide. The first one is, what did we say, 10? And then the second one is 13. Everyone okay with that? So then the integral is approximately equal to 4.6. If we know that f of 1 is 15, then f of 1.4 using this approximation, this is the change in, right? It's the accumulation, it's the area under the curve. We would add that to 15 and get 19.6. Okay, so the tangent line gave us 18.2. The Riemann sum approximation gave us 19.6. Okay, part C says we're gonna use Euler's method. If you remember, Euler's method says that um, y 2 is equal to y1 plus delta y, but delta y is equal to delta x times dy dx. And so we're going to have to do two different steps here. Okay, so let's find out what f of 1.2 is. f of 1.2 should just be f of 1 plus the step size 
times the derivative at 1, but we can look in the chart and find the derivative is equal to that. Okay, so that means that is 16.6. Does that make sense? And then we'll do one more step. f of 1.4 is equal to f of 1.2 plus a step size of 0.2 times the derivative at 1.4. But we can look up and we can find the derivative. Oops, excuse me, the derivative at 1.2. We look up here to find the derivative at 1.2. The derivative at 1.2 is 12, so we put a 12 in here, and we type that out and we get 19.0. Again, you can bookkeep this however you want to, but if we want to find a future y value, we take the original y value plus the change. The change, again, this is Euler's method. It says that delta y is equal to delta x times the derivative at that point. Hopefully that makes sense by now. If not, you can look back at some Euler's notes um, stuff. And again, we have this as our first approximation way, this is our next one, and then this is Euler's method, all giving us fairly similar results for f of 1.4. And then part D, which is actually the easiest one of all of them, it says use a Taylor polynomial, a second degree. So the second degree of Taylor polynomial is just 15 plus 8 times x minus 1. And then it does tell us information about the second derivative. It tells us that it's 20. So 20 x minus 1 squared over 2 factorial. For me, you know, this one is actually the easiest question. It's the Taylor series one. Let's just kind of throw it in. And then just put in 1.4 here, and you get 19.8. Again, tangent line is a first order. That's a Taylor series question. This is a Taylor series question. This is just doing Euler's method, which you may have to review. And this is doing Riemann sums. We can do LRAM, we can do RRAM, we can do trapezoid. This particular one, one you to do MRAM, midpoint rectangular approximational method. And again, integrals are accumulation of area. The area under the curve is the width times the height plus another width times the height. They said use two boxes. We use two boxes since we did MRAM. We use the middle y value of the box. And we got 4.6, which is that accumulation. We added it to our original 15 to get 19.6. Okay, that's 2012.